Hey, it's Tuesday again. Time I do my weekly e-video e-blast. I uh, didn't come to you last week. We were fighting pipes and all the issues of the freezing cold weather in Texas. For those of you who've been watching the news about Texas and international news and stuff, yes, it has been bad, but we're not the, uh, we're not helpless people in Texas. We don't stand around and wait for everybody else to come help us. We take charge and we get things done. And for with that, let me say to all of those church members who were so faithful, not only in resolving the issues you were facing at the time, but jumping immediately in to help others who were facing busted pipes or taking people into your home because of the situations. You're a blessing. God bless you. May God increase your tribe. To those like uh, Terry Acker, Marcus Acker, Edwin uh, Averett, uh, Joseph Arms, uh, uh, Gary Juarez, Matt Campbell, uh, Gary Canna, others. I um, hope I didn't forget anybody who came and helped us with the crisis at the church and the water issues at both campuses that we were facing with busted pipes. Uh, thank you for getting down to it and making sure that we were able to have Sunday services. Uh, God, again, may God increase your tribe as well. You're a blessing. Listen, God is up to some great things. I know as we look around the country today and we see the crisis mode that everybody seems to be in in this particular cancel culture that we're living in, we're not going to allow them to cancel out Jesus or cancel out God and especially the church. One thing that's especially been uh, terrible for many things, uh, for, for many churches in our country is that there are, a lot of them are facing closures. I listened to a, a black pastor on the news the other night talking about the issues they were facing, uh, and talking about many black churches, because there's many white churches, Hispanic churches, Korea, all across the, all across the nation as well, across and around the world. Churches are suffering. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. He, the Lord said, I will build it. So I'm encouraging pastors and members of other churches as well is to be faithful, hold hold the line, don't let go, keep trusting God, don't shut down, you know, don't 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 sit down, just keep moving forward. God's going to meet you in this. This is this is his church, all right? We're going to get through it. Uh, it's obvious there's folks who have left because of the crisis. I am not looking to to, to for those many of those folks to come back. It's just I think it's going to be a fact of of the reality that we're going to have to deal with as as churches that we're probably going to lose about 15% to 10, 10 to 20, 25% in some congregations, probably about 10% at our church of folks who they've, they just gotten comfortable in that situation. And it's become now a, a time where they've developed a bad habit of not assembling together. Others uh, who are still waiting for the shots and who are getting those, I'm expecting uh, last week we had some people come back to church who've been out, who were in that danger kind of uh, situation uh, with their or immune systems and I've gotten vaccinations. I've gotten back. I heard word from uh, two more people this week, two more different households that said they'll be coming back this week. They've taken their vaccines and they're ready to get going for the Lord. So uh, there are going to be some who just won't come back. There's going to be some who need to be encouraged to come back. There's it's, it's always, remember, we live a life of F-A-I-T-H, faith. So let's continue to believe and to trust God. I'm really going to be calling on our church. You know, we're, we're living in a time when, when because of all these issues, uh, so many people in leadership are afraid to ask for commitments and uh, dis disciplines. And and uh, so they're kind of going real easy in their presentations of the, of the gospel. There's no real call to live a godly life. There's no real call to live a, a sacrificial life. Uh, it's a life of the disciple. It's, it's a life of discipline and it's a life of commitment. If we're going to be not going to get back to where we were, but go beyond where we were, which I believe is what God would have us all to do, then we can't be a part of that, you know, laser fair group. We can't be a part of the casual group. We cannot certainly be a part of the group who just sits by and lets everybody else do what God's called us to do. In fact, we are in, we're we're embracing some initiatives that we're moving forward with in our church, and uh, hoping that each and every one of you get get on board. It will require personal commitment. It will require sacrifice on your part. It will require love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. Love others and reach the world. It's going to require that to become more than just a byline and a motto. It's going to have to be a way that we live our lives. Uh, as, as we move forward, we're initiating a, what we call pray and go. We'll be praying for whole communities. We, we were moving towards that at the end of 29, 2019 when COVID started moving in. So we didn't initiate in 2020, but we were still working on it. And we have been working up on it. So at the spring campus, we're not launching there first. We'll be talking about Magnolia campus later, but praying for every home around our homes. It's that Nehemiah thing where Nehemiah put the people to work to rebuild the walls. 
uh, around their own community, around their neighborhood, around their home. And if you read Nehemiah, it says, as he appointed families that they worked on the wall in front of their home. We're going to work on the gospel in our, in our, in our sphere of influence. So I want to encourage you to take up that challenge. I know it's a time when preachers don't want to call people to commitment and sacrifice, but because there's so much we're facing already. But this is not the time for you and I to set back and watch this world continue to deteriorate and, and destroy more and more people's lives. It is time for us to take the initiative, step forward, and be all that God called us to be. So, yes, I am asking you as your pastor uh, to to get back in, in tune with the Lord in your life. Seek God with all your heart. And let's move forward. We'll be praying for our communities, every household in our communities. We're going to be, we'll be giving you uh, insight on, on, on how to st strategically carry that out in, in your sphere of influence. Uh, as we move into Easter, it's part of our Easter approach. Easter is going to launch not just a, a big effort to increase the attendance. This is, this is going well beyond just a, a large crowd on Easter. We're, we're moving forward to shoot from Easter that we're continually not just taking a big crowd, but we're building on Easter and going forward right into Mother's Day and right on. We'll be launching a particular Bible study uh, entitled Knowing God. When you see our Easter theme for this year, as it begins to unfold, we've already designed it. It's laid out. Banners are going up. Signs will be going up. The LED signs in front of the buildings will be going up. Signage in front of Magnolia is going up. It's called Easter Knowing God. We'll be having four services on Easter, two at Magnolia, two at Spring, to help with the, so we can continue the social distancing things that we've been doing and can maintain that attitude. So Easter is going to be just more than a push for that day. It's, this is the, this is a push for us through spring and summer into the fall to do what God's called us to do about reaching the world that God, that, that God's placed us in at the time that He's placed it in. So praise God. Once again, let me, let me reiterate. Thank you for being so faithful to help each other during times of crisis. Thank those who help the church again. You're a blessing. God bless you. May, may his riches be poured out upon your life. Three is, let's don't settle for mediocrity. If you're finding, finding yourself in that place today, then go to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I, restore the fervor, restore the passion, restore the fire. If there's never been a fire, give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. There are things that God has us doing and to called us to be in this particular age. Don't miss out on it. I've been doing this series. It's been fascinating. Those who've been a part of it uh, will, uh, uh, will agree that not because I'm preaching it again, but because the material is we go back to the book of Genesis and look at our, our the original plan of God and how Jesus fulfilled all the things that needed to be fulfilled in creation for us, fallen humanity, as we'll, we'll continue that. We've been talking about the, the ark and, and the incredible prophetic significance of the ark, as well as what actually happened in that particular time period. So don't miss out on it. Jesus is Lord. God is doing some things. These are exciting days. Let's get back at it. Let's do what God's called us to do. And most importantly, let us be what God has called us to be. Love you today. God bless you.